Hey, my name is Mark, and in this segment, we're going to start a series on residual energy and haunts. And I hope to turn this into a book sometime uh, soon. But perhaps no concept is more universally assumed to be true in the paranormal community than that of the residual energy or haunt. Along with the intelligent human haunt, the poltergeist, and the demonic. The residual haunt is alleged to be one of four forms of hauntings. However, there is a strong consensus amongst many paranormal investigators that the residual haunt is the most common type of haunt. In fact, for most, the vast majority of paranormal activity is attributed to residual activity. Now remember, technically, um, it's not paranormal activity because it's thought to be caused solely by natural forces. For this reason alone, how common it is, the notion of residual energy and haunt is of immense importance. Um, in addition, even many Christians who reject the notion of earthbound spirits or ghosts and poltergeists do believe in residual energy and haunts. The notion of residual, of residual energy uh, has bled over into popular culture and into the church, and it's become ensconced into our cultural mindset. I say this gently, uh, but to my knowledge, there have been very few people um, in the paranormal community who have really addressed this issue as far as how, how to defend it, uh, how to describe it, um, the mechanism, and so forth. And um, so in this, in this segment, I'm, I'm going to try to do something that's uh, not very, very common. Um, I want to try to show that this, this common belief really is deeply flawed, indeed, a very harmful idea. Now, it's, it's always, I think, proper to um, never assume prior knowledge. A, um, a residual haunt, or what some people call place memory, um, is a uh, paranormal hypothesis which states that inanimate materials can absorb some form of energy from living beings during high moments of high tension, for example, angry outbursts, abuse, or traumatic death. The stored energy can be released, resulting in a display of recorded activity. And these hauntings are not intelligent, but simply non-interactive recordings similar to a movie or a tape recorder. And I need to add that the notion of residual energy or haunts is, is really not even a scientific hypothesis at this point. It's, it's speculation uh, within the paranormal community that has become enormously popular. In, in fact, it's really not even um, uh, second guess. It's just simply assumed to be true. Um, but there's really no scientific proof for it. Um, but it certainly has bewitched the world. Uh, I combine residual energy and residual haunts together because it is the notion of residual energy that provides the basis for this kind of residual haunt. That is, without residual energy, there would be no residual haunts. Uh, they re allegedly act as uh, cause and effect. And I need to add at this point that it's usually thought that um, residual haunts are completely harmless. Uh, because they're non-intelligent. However, what if they are intelligent? And that's going to be my argument, as you see, you will come to see. Think of the enormous damage that has been done and continues to be done, all in the name of an unexamined theory that's very popular within the paranormal community. Um... If I may read, need my glasses for this. This is a quote from Jeff Belanger. I hope I said that right. He's pretty well known in the paranormal community. Quote, 
No universal way seems to exist to be able to shut down or stop a paranormal time reflection. That's his way of talking about residual um, energy, paranormal time reflection, or PTR. Because we simply do not know what causes it to happen. Some people claim residual haunts, PTRs, happen due to traumatic events leaving an energy imprint. That may be true in a few cases, but many cases of PTR of commonplace occurrences, like someone repeatedly walking from room to room, exiting through an apparent doorway that is no longer there, or doing some mundane task. Nothing seems to indicate why that particular moment in time gets captured and repeatedly re um, reflected back during our time or perhaps through time perpetually, end quote. Um, actually, he goes on to say, So, we're also left with the disconcerting truth that perhaps the majority of residual haunts or paranormal time reflection, PTR, are not, are not caused by alleged prim um, primary cause of resi residual haunts, and that is a traumatic event which leaves an imprint on the surroundings. Rather confusing to say the least, and no 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 known means of cleansing it either, unless you treat it as demonic. <laughs> and it will go away. I know because I've done it. This is me speaking. Contrary to what uh, Jeff says, um, these things can be shown to be demonic. In addition to Jeff's article, he also belabors the point that we probably should not even call it a haunt in order to not frighten the homeowner who is in no danger whatsoever because of its non-intelligent nature. And that's one of the things that really grieves me and concerns me is that elsewhere some other people will call it, tell them that they're almost lucky because they're living in... Um, a well, a living like museum, and they should be uh, proud uh, of that fact. Um, but the fact is, is that mu much of the residual energy ends up being quite hostile. Um, so one is left to wonder why there is so little self-reflection within the paranormal community regarding this immensely crucial topic. It is simply assumed to be true. The stone tape theory, as it was originally called, has been accepted in the paranormal community even though it lacks a mechanism to explain how it works. Now consider the following quote. Quote, The problem is that we know of no mechanism that would record such information in a stone or play it back. Chunks of stone just do not have the same properties as reels of tape. Even magnetic tape cannot reco record sound or video without a special recording head. Speaking to a magnetic tape will not record anything, nor can one hear what's recorded on a magnetic tape by putting it up to one's ear. In both cases, a special device like a read-write head is needed. And the stone tape theory provides no clue as to what such device would be. This is from Schick Theodore von Lewis, How to Think About Weird Things. Um, and if I may add, there needs to be a person to record a button, to press the record button, as well as the playback button. Not to mention what we get into further, uh, later on, just how complex the holographic imagery and stuff has to be when folks talk about residual energy being displayed on um, battlefields where you see um, soldiers marching through the woods. Think of the, the immense complexity that it would take for a human being to portray that image walking through the woods, and yet this is said to be done simply by natural forces. Um, does it strike you as odd, as it does me, 
that a theory which has been accepted by a monolithic consensus by the paranormal community has no mechanism to explain one of its most basic assumptions, nor are they able to explain the very basics of how it works. Stating that it acts like a recorder is not an explanation, but simply an analogy, and a faulty one at that. No science is offered to provide any insights as to how energy can be stored and then played back in a way that is mind-blowing. And as we saw above, most residual haunts are a very mundane activities, which would not fit the model of traumatic events leaving an imprint. Um, a friend of mine named Tim Yohe has written a book on this issue, and I have a review of his book, which I'll talk about at the end, um, several segments from now. But the intent of my book, and also of these YouTube videos, is to analyze this common notion of residual energy and haunts, and show why it should be rejected as contrary to science, common sense, God's Word, and that it's fraught with internal inconsistencies and is proven to be a very harm, harmful beyond measure to countless people. You see, a moment's communion with common sense reveals the crucial role, role for good or ill that this widely accepted belief entails. It either has tremendous explanatory power or Satan has us thoroughly deceived. The stakes are really high, and Christians cannot afford to be wrong on this one. Too much is at stake, especially for the homeowner. Especially if, like Belanger, if you're eager to tell the homeowner that there is no danger because it's merely looping energy. But whether you're a Christian or not, I trust that my arguments from science will be met with receptive hearts, because I'm convinced that this theory has caused enormous damage and confusion for all kinds of people. Consider the countless homeowners and business owners who have been advised by investigators that they have nothing to fear because it is merely looping energy that's causing the disturbances. But what? What if it is more than merely looping energy? What have we done to these dear people who are relying on us to give them an accurate diagnosis? My eldest sister Janet, if I may be personal for a moment, was misdiagnosed for months by her doctors regarding her cancer. And by the time an intern decided to do a basic x-ray of her torso, it was too late. The cancer had spread to her liver and she died several months later. Had it been accurately diagnosed in a timely fashion, my sister Janet would still be, perhaps, still be alive today. What if paranormal investigators are, are unwittingly misdiagnosing spiritually cancerous paranormal phenomena that is demonic by attributing it to benign energy forces? That is precisely what I am convinced is happening. What if it's not merely energy? Given the enormous ramifications, I am again vexed as to why folks in the paranormal community do not spend more time engaging in self-examination regarding their foundational beliefs. And so my purpose in these segments is to subject this notion to analysis. If something is true, then it should stand up to honest scrutiny. And if it doesn't stand up to analysis, then do you really want to continue embracing a false belief that is harming others? And the harm done in this case can lead to eternal consequences that are unspeakably dreadful. Hell. I'm going to stop here for tonight before we jump into the science. Thank you.